Hi, everybody. We're going to get started. So welcome to the land you live on, uh, Native Land Digital with uh, Christine McRae. We'll get started with the session in, in just a minute or so. Um, I just wanted to walk us through the format for today. First of all, my name is Emily Reno, and I'm with the, um, I work at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology with another of my colleagues, um, Amy Perot, and we have a couple of support staff here helping us with the session today. Um, my role is a senior educational consultant at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology at UBC on this unceded uh, territorial lands of the Musqueam people. I'm coming from you today from East Vancouver, and um, the start to my learning journey in land acknowledgments has been learning to kind of position myself, um, who I am, where I am, and where my learning takes place. Um, and just as a side note, I was, I was born in Montreal um, on the, uh, near the St. Lawrence River. And um, as a young person, many, many years ago, I attended elementary school and high school there, as well as university. Um, and the education I received way back then was very different to what it is now in terms of um, a respectful acknowledgement of, of First Nation was, was not the norm. So when I met with Christine and Amy a few months ago, uh, I discovered the native.land.ca website, which we'll cover today, and that gave me a, a very new perspective on where I'd grown up on um, the the territory, the kind of the the multiple territories I'd grown up on in Montreal. Um, and we'll kind of look at that and explore that in the session today. So I do encourage you to not only explore the the lands you are live, working on now, but perhaps you may not have grown up in Vancouver. Um, and you come from other parts of potentially uh, Canada or the U.S. So the native land site is exceptionally interesting and really provides you with a new perspective on on where you are now and perhaps where you grew up. So um, for today, uh, we're all in the Collaborate Ultra space. Um, so on the screen right now, we have a little bit of a screenshot of uh, what we're going to be using today, how we're going to proceed. Um, for the session today, there's a lot of us in the session, and more people are coming in. So we are going to proceed as follows. Um, first of all, the session is being recorded, so um, you can certainly watch a recap of this later. We'll let you know how to find that recording. Um, for the session today, if everybody could please ensure their mic is off and their camera is off. So we're not going to be using those features today. As Christine and Amy proceed through the session, um, we are going to actually ask you to hold off with your questions at the end of the session. We've built in a lot of time at the end uh, for, for some interactivity. So if you do have questions, please do save them to the end. And what we're gonna ask you to do is, there is on the right-hand side, there's a collaborate panel. You should see a purple button here. If you don't see that, please click on that. It will open up your collaborate panel. I'm just sort of doing a little square on that. And we will be using the chat feature for your questions. So again, maybe drop them down on a piece of paper and then hold off uh, posting them until we kind of give you the, um, the all okay to post your questions. So I think, I think that's probably about it. Can I, Amy, can I pass that over to you? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to go here. Tanshi Kia Maten, Amy Perot de Shinikashon, Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Traditional Ancestral and Unceded Territories, Newikin. Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Perot. And I live on the ancestral, unceded territories uh, and homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. Um, I introduce myself in my traditional language, which is Michif. And I'm proudly Red River Métis on my father's side and mixed European ancestry on my mom's side. And I'm really excited today to welcome back, I can say, my friend now, Christine <laughs> McRae. Um, thank you, Christine, for joining us again today. Uh, this is the second time that we welcome Christine um, back. Uh, the session, as Emily mentioned, is The Land You Live On, Native Land Digital. 
Um, yes, thanks, Christine, for your generosity and for joining us again today. And welcome, everyone, to this session. Um, my role at the Center for Teaching Learning Technology is I'm the Senior Strategist for Indigenous Initiatives. And um, I'm really glad that you're here. I'm really glad that you're here to join us in this conversation today. So um, we, have, uh, we have a little bit of an agenda today. We're going to do some introductions. I'll, I'll pass it over to Christine to introduce herself um, in just a moment. Christine is going to be talking about uh, native land and the concept territory. Um, so we'll, we'll sit tight and, and, and put our listening ears on for that. And then Christine's also going to talk a little bit about how to use the native land resource. And we'll have some time for questions and answers. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just pass it over to you, Christine. We're all ears and uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation today and what you're going to be sharing with us. Hi, everybody. Uh, Amy. So I'm going to start out by introducing myself in my language, which is Anishinaabewin. Kwe ni bojo, Christine Anishinaakas, Marawas Kazibi, Donchiba, Ajijak and Dodem, Omama Wudeni Anishinaabe, Kwe and Dao. And so uh, what that translates out to is um, Kwe um, is the Algonquin way of saying hello, Ani is the Ojibwe way of saying hello, and most of my elders and teachers are Ojibwe, so honoring them and the role they've played in my life. Um, Bojo is a traditional, more like a ceremonial greeting uh, that, that I, I tend to include when I introduce myself. So Kwe Ani Bojo, Christine Adishnikas, Christine is my name. Madawaska Zibin Donjaba. So I am from the Madawaska River. My people are the Madawaska Rini Algonquins, particularly those from the headwaters. Um and Dodem, I am from the Crane Clan. And Omama Winini Anishinaabe Kwayandao means that I am an Algonquin woman. So I am also of um, settler ancestry, um, including Irish, Scottish, and Polish. And um, those people were some of the first settlers to end up in this Madawaska Rainy territory where I live today. So to give you a bit of background of who I am, um, I also, in, in addition to my role with Native Land Digital, I own two indigenous knowledge-based companies. One is a consulting company and the other one is more focused in tourism. I worked as an archaeologist, an orator. Um, I have worked as an educator and I've also worked in the realm of indigenous politics. Um, I spend most of my time outdoors and I poke around in my garden a lot and am really focused on medicinal plants. Um, I'm currently working on writing a history of the Madawaska Rainy Onquin people. Um, the research is what takes a long time. I'm somewhere around 15 to 18 years into this project. Um, I'm also currently um, starting my master's degree in Indigenous Studies from Trent University in September. Now, in February, I accepted the role of executive director with Native Land Digital. And um, actually, prior to accepting this role, I had used uh, native land while I was working as an educator. So it was to um, to show Algonquin people and also non-Indigenous people in this territory uh, the extent of our territories and how those territory lines may have been altered over time and also who our closest neighbors would be in the, the deep relationships that have existed um, since time immemorial. Now, I will say that since um, since I accepted this role of exec director, it's been really, really great to get to know um, where Native Land Digital started and as, as well learning all of the people who work tirelessly uh, behind the scenes. I do want to say thank you to, to Amy, to Emily, and for everyone at, um, at UBC. Thank you for inviting me to join you again. Um, I do really appreciate all the technological help that goes on behind the scenes. That is not my forte, so thank you for making this possible. Um, Native Land is, is very thankful and um, very excited about this um, this relationship that's been with with UBC and certainly it's been it's been lovely chatting with Amy too so we, we have developed quite a friendship so I feel very very thankful for that especially in a time when it's so hard for all of us to um, to connect face to face we're only able to do it digitally so on to the the topic of territory acknowledgements um, 
when thinking about territories or at least a place that we lived often people do not realize that the history of a place goes back a very long time so um, in the case of um, Algonquin territory my family has been here for many 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 generations and at least 10,000 years so I curve along the shores of the Madawaska River. Um, I'm very lucky to live in the place that my ancestors have been since time immemorial. And no matter where I have lived, there's always been something that has brought me back to this place. So I'm very thankful that I can look my window and see the place that my ancestors have always been. So uh, Madawaskarini people, as with every indigenous group, uh, we have been shaped by the land that we live on. We have not only survived, but we have also thrived because of this land. So around 1700, my ancestors began submitting petitions to the crown to allow for our ability to remain in our territory. Um, although we had been forced to submit these petitions, uh, most of them were flat out ignored, but my ancestors persevered and were able to stay here. So the big, um, the big issue, I guess, issue might not be the correct word, but um, if you were to look on a map of where I live, you'll see that there is this big mass of land that is set aside called Algonquin Park. And my ancestors, um, that was our traditional homeland. And in 1893, we were forcibly removed. And the reason why this place on the Madawaska River where I'm living now is so special to me is because no matter what, we have remained here. Um, my ancestors persevered. They decided to stay in this place, even though it led to so many other implications, even as far as our identity. Most of us are non-status Algonquins because we refuse to go to a reserve and to leave this place we have called home. But my ancestors fought and they, they did this. They stayed in this place because they dreamt of me. They dreamt of these present generations, these people that would come after them. Um, that's, that's why I am able to still be here now. So this work that I do both with native land and with my own um, my own consulting work, um, I am able to teach people about uh, about this land, about our stories, about our people and create a space as well for other indigenous people to do the same thing. Um, and this is how I acknowledge my territory and my ancestors. So as we're going through this session, I ask you to consider whose territory you are on. Um, wondering if you know the stories of the land, if you know the people that are there, if you have relationships with the people that, that have always been in that place. And also it's my hope that Native Land can help you to at least start to, uh, to answer those questions. So uh, to give a bit of history of Native Land, it started in 2014 when, um, uh, or in Vancouver, BC, when founder Victor Temprano, who is non-Indigenous, began to more deeply consider um, people's history of the landscape in BC. And he created a digital platform that mapped Indigenous territories, languages, and place names uh, beginning in North America. And then since then, it's extended over time. So from um, its, its humble beginnings in 2014 to present day in 2020, um, Native Land has become a registered Canadian not-for-profit. Uh, we're governed by an Indigenous board of directors. They have hired me, an Indigenous executive director. And it's also um, supported by an advisory council and a few contract staff members. Native Land is available as both a web and an app resource. Um, it offers information in, on Indigenous territories in almost 30 different countries, representing thousands of Indigenous groups. Uh, by making those maps publicly available, we directly address the issues of Indigenous marginalization and lack of knowledge of Indigenous histories and territories. So at present, we're really focused on adding territories in, um, in Central and South America, and we're also really focused on adding Indigenous languages to the map. So speaking to the concept of territory, for Indigenous people, there's no disconnect between us and the land. Uh, this connection is inherently spiritual and is a basis for our ways of being and our ways of knowing. And often um, it's not only a, a space for us to live, but it also forms um, our connection to our ceremonies. It is at the most um, 
it, there's almost no word really in, in the English language to describe the connection that we have with the land that we come from. We are, we are the same, we are part of that land. Um, it is also a source of stories and teaches us how to live responsible and respectful relationships with all other living beings, both those that we can see, those that we cannot see. Um, and it also teaches us that we have been put here on this land to take care of it for the next seven generations. So through technology, native land is able to um, encourage an opportunity to educate people on that type of spiritual connection to, to the land. Um, it goes far beyond property lines and discussions of history. Um, and we use technology to improve the consciousness of our relationship to the land on which we live. So as um, Amy had mentioned in the agenda, uh, we will be visiting the native land site. But before we get to that point, I do want to offer um, a disclaimer. So at native land, uh, we do try our very best to offer uh, accurate information, but we, we do know that our map is not perfect. So it is a constant work in progress that is rooted in information that is offered by both communities and individuals. So if you have visited the native land site, you will know there's a lot of information uh, on the map itself. So with that amount of information, you can imagine that there is always a, a real risk of putting any sort of incomplete or um, in progress information out to the public where any, whether you're educators or government officials or even individuals, can choose to use it or misuse that information. The risk alone doesn't belong to, um, to just native land digital, but also to the people who live in those territories that we are trying to feature on the map. And that's why the accuracy is even more important to us. So that being said, we always offer um, community participation from users, including general comments, fixes, and requests to add additional information or perhaps add more accurate mapping lines. Um, we are always willing to change or move or add um, whatever need be for uh, a territory, as long as it's verified information. Um, this turns the risk of unintentionally hurting people who live in the territories um, into an inclusive digital platform that is able to affect positive change in the world. We believe that it is more important than ever to listen, to be patient, and um, practice humility and build relationships with uh, with our community. And, and those, those connections really do go a long way. So we certainly want to um, hear from people if you notice that anything is not correct on the map itself. So with that said, um, let's visit the website. Emily, are you all set? I am. Yeah, give me one minute. Okay. Go right ahead. Okay, so um, this is basically a very short version of the disclaimer that I had offered earlier. So to move beyond that disclaimer, you can simply click the X in the upper right corner or click the go to map. Okay, so it's a little bit fuzzy, but we'll work beyond that. So on the left side of the screen, you will see that there are um, some things that say territories, languages, or treaties, and we refer to those as the toggles. So you can choose to view the map under any of these delineations. So for the sake of today's session, we'll remain under territories, which it's on now. Um, when you visit the site your, yourself, I encourage you to play along uh, with the toggles and see how the map changes while you go through. So I thought it best to use my own nation as a bit of an example to show you how native land works. So to go directly to Algonquin territory, I will get Emily to um, type Algonquin in the search bar. Okay, so you see a number of options that appear on the screen, and I'm interested in the Algonquin um, territory itself rather than the languages. So we'll click the first one, which is Amama Wininiwak. So that's the Algonquin word for Algonquin people. So we can select that, and that will bring you to Algonquin territory. 
Now this um, Algonquin territory will end up in the center of the screen, but you'll notice that there are many overlapping territories. Um, this delineates different treaties that were negotiated on the territory that actually did not involve Algonquin people at all, but that's another story. Um, shared territories, whether they were friendly or they were forced. And you will also note that overall the territory is, um, it's also listed as Anishinaabe Aki, um, meaning that it is Anishinaabek land. So Emily, if I can get you just to hover above the middle of the Algonquin territory. So you can see that Anishinaabe Aki on, on, the, uh, on the bottom there. So um, Anishinaabe Aki, it, Anishinaabe people, um, it's a group of indigenous people that share a similar culture and language system. So it's a bit of an umbrella term that Algonquin people fit under. And this also includes the Nipsing, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and many others. So that's a bit of an introduction to the territory, but I want to learn more. So under the search, uh, you will see an option to select the nation of whose territory you were on. So it's on the left-hand side in the blue writing. So I want to go specifically to Mama Winini. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to select that. And then this will bring you. Yeah. Hold on one minute. Okay. It's a different tab I have to share. Okay. And just as a sign note for people, as we're loading, because um, I'm loading off my computer, uh, my browser, it, it may be, depending on your connectivity, it may be a staggered kind of buffering. So we'll provide some space to let things load. I think it's this. Oh, sorry, wrong one. One moment. Sorry about that, We're having some difficulties. What's going on? Sorry, one moment. Not sure what's happening here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, there we yeah, are. So this will, that's okay. Thank you, Emily. So this brings you to the resource page on the specific nation being the Algonquin nation. So if you scroll down a tiny little bit, um, you will see that there are a few websites that are listed. Um, again, giving you the option to learn more about the Algonquin, Nipissing, um, our languages and um, Anishinaabeg territories overall. So you will notice that under the maps um, on the right hand side, um, you can also view a few additional sources. So just scroll down a tiny little bit and hit sources there. And then this gives you a few additional ways to start your your research or start learning about um, about this nation itself. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the most important features of native land is the ability for individuals to give feedback. So say if I were to select a certain link on this website and it brings me up to a broken link, I could then submit um, the information that there's a correction that's needed. Now, fixes are sent to our research assistant who adds verified content or makes required changes. So um, we're going to go back to the overall map of Algonquin territory, if we can do that, Emily. Yeah. And I'll, you want the Algonquin? Yeah, if we can, please. Yeah. Right place? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So going back to this map, um, what I want to do is illustrate exactly what I meant by that earlier disclaimer. So although native land is an excellent resource, um, it's certainly a resource to start um, to start any research or any work that you might want to do. So 
it is impossible for native land to capture every bit of information that's available out there, but we do our best to um, to include information that is relevant and verified and wherever possible information that's given by the nations themselves. So when looking at this map, um, when you are a non-Algonquin person or perhaps a visitor to the territory and you want to learn more, um, you see the complexity of these layers. Now, um, the layers give you a very basic understanding of what has happened or what is happening in this territory. Um, and the, the thing to keep in mind is that when you visit this and you see these shapes, um, it only gives you a bit of a, a face value. Now, to take the, the disclaimer seriously, um, you must, again, dig deeper. Now, as an Algonquin person with extensive knowledge, of our territory, I know that Algonquin territory is unceded, meaning that it was never um, there was never an agreement made with the crown to give away land. Um, that Algonquin territory is both in Ontario and in Quebec and spans the Ottawa River itself. I know that we have been here for over 10,000 years and probably longer. We're just waiting for the archaeological record to catch up with us. Um, and that um, Algonquin people belong to the Anishinaabeg Nation. I know that we have had a very, um, a very close relationship with Nipissing people and were once governed by a chief, um, Pon Chimeganish, who was actually my grandfather many generations back. So um, research will also tell you that there is no reserve here, that we fought um, with those petitions I'd mentioned earlier for well over 250 years for recognition of our land. And those efforts are still underway today. Um, research will show you that it is not actually claimed by the Huron-Wendat, which you see coming up on the screen now, um, but rather throughout time, those people were either some of our closest uh, neighbors and allies, but also some of those people had uh, forcibly made their way onto our territory during something called the Beaver Wars during the fur trade. Um, it will also, um, for the research, will also show you that it is not um, shared Métis territory, although many um, Algonquin people intermarried with settler families. So um, research will show you that the stories are much, much, much deeper than you can see just on the map itself. It's much deeper than the lines that exist. Um, and just that reminder that native land is meant to be a tool that is used to raise awareness of indigenous land, um, of our histories, our ways of knowing, and to encourage and foster a greater understanding um, and relationship between indigenous and non-indigenous populations. Um, a broad goal of native land is to serve as a platform where indigenous communities can represent themselves by their own governance and their own ways of knowing. So in other words, native land is a resource about land and the meaning of land, not just about indigenous people, but a platform for indigenous people to tell their own stories. So at the most fundamental level, native land was created to encourage discussions of colonization, land rights, language, and indigenous history that are tied to our own personal histories. There are a number of tools for those types of conversations that are found on the Native Land website, um, including our territory acknowledgement, which you can see at the very top there in the middle. So Emily, if we're able to select that, Okay, so our, um, most people might start to become familiar with territory acknowledgements, um, but if you're not, or if you just want a bit of a refresher, uh, territory or land acknowledgement is an act of reconciliation that involves making a statement, recognizing the traditional land of um, and the indigenous people who have lived in a particular place, often since time immemorial. Acknowledging a territory is a sign of recognition and respect for Indigenous peoples and is a way to insert awareness of Indigenous presence and land rights in daily life. Many of us are becoming more familiar with hearing land acknowledgements and they take place at the very beginning of all ceremonies, presentations, meetings and public events. So what this resource does is encourages um, the user to dig a little bit deeper into what territory acknowledgements are, um, how we might construct our own, and then it also offers critical questions and suggested resources. 
So um, if we scroll through, it basically says like why to acknowledge, how to acknowledge, next steps, and to uh, to learn more. So it also gives a few quotes from um, individuals like Chelsea Vowell, who is a Métis woman. Um, she wrote a book called uh, Indigenous Rights and has an absolutely incredible blog that I encourage you to check out. Um, so one thing with territory acknowledgements that I do want to point out is um, we need to be aware that they can often become a token gesture rather than a meaningful practice. So we all have the responsibility to consciously and continually reflect on what it means to acknowledge territory and the, the history of that territory as well as a leg legacy of um, colonialism by thinking about what happened in the past as well as what changes can be made in the future to further the reconciliation process even on a very personal level. Um, now, I, I do encourage you to keep in mind that everyone is, is learning and to be patient and kind to yourselves as we are learning what it is to live, um, to live and practice reconciliation with Indigenous people. So this is um, available on the site. You'll see on the tab in the, in the middle. But I also want to talk to you a little bit about the teacher's guide. So Emily, if we can... Um, head back to the teacher's guide. Now that'll be, yep, right on the top of the screen there. Okay, so the teacher's guide. Um, it essentially shows the user how to interact at an in-depth level with the native land website in a very critical context. So this guide explains that maps are mostly interpreted in a colonial context and represent a very particular way of excuse me, representing territories, which includes ownership, exclusivity, and power relations. So you'll see on the website there's an older teacher's guide and a newer teacher's guide. So we're going to focus on the newer teacher's guide for now. Emily, are we able to open that one? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, having some okay. connectivity issues today, which I'm sure everybody can can um, can certainly understand now that we're home full time. Everyone's sharing the internet <laughs> heavily. Just a second. So I'm just going to bring up the PDF. Is that what you're looking for? Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're able to. Yeah. Thanks for everybody's patience today. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I can promise if I was doing this, it would take like five times the amount of time. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the teacher's guide will be hopefully coming up now. All right. Yeah. So, um, this shows you the the table of contents. So everything that is contained in the uh, in the teacher's guide. So again, it, it talks about a disclaimer. Um, talks about why land acknowledgements are important. Um, how to use the maps. The pros and cons of our maps. Um, and then it also lists exclusive um, exercises in mapping. Now, this teacher's guide is something that is applicable from elementary school up to post-secondary and really encourages the user to, um, to kind of use as needed and you're always able to, to adapt. So if we can scroll to um, land as a way of knowing, so it should be, I think, page 13, if that's possible. Yeah. Sorry for the uh, roller coaster ride here. There we go. <laughs> so the teacher's guide encourages the user to think more critically about the ways in which we think about and interact with the land. And it, it speaks to that concept that I, I talked about earlier, that Indigenous people, uh, we understand that the land is a living being and, and influences the way in which we act with the land itself. So there's a little bit more information on that specific um, bit of knowledge if you're interested. 
Um, if you scroll down to exercise two, I'm not sure exactly which page that is, but it does list basic resources and asks uh, questions that will have students um, thinking critically about the own place that are their own place where they live. Um, simple questions like, do you know the name of the indigenous territory that you live on? And then encourages more interactive ways of learning through maps, um, including um, mapping the ways that they use the own their own territory that they live on. Um, and if you can, I think we're OK. Um, now, Emily, are we OK to close out the teacher's guide? And I will head back to my yeah. own big screen. Sure. Okay, so both the land acknowledgement and teacher's guide are tools um, that Native Land offers that are free to download. Um, they are available on the website only, um, not on our app, I don't believe. Um, but overall, these tools encourage the user to to think more critically and to um, to encourage an attempt to shift the colonial narrative and the ways that we think about land and mapping and private territories and, and those strong delineations. Um, so as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, Native Land is very appreciative of our interactions with our um, online community. Much of our information, particularly the accuracy of our information, can be attributed to community source knowledge and the work of volunteers. So if anyone um, on the call or if anyone that you know um, might have questions about native land or notice there is information missing or a change required or say you want to contribute in some way, um, we would love to hear from you. So I will, um, whenever I have a second, I will put my uh, my personal email with native land up in the chat and I encourage you, even if you just want to have a conversation or have questions about territory, um, about native land itself or something beyond that, I can at least try to share resources with you. So you are invited to engage with native land in some way, um, whether it's just using the resource or the website as a resource um, or engage with us on social media as well. Now, there are numerous specific opportunities for people to um, to join native land in some of the work that we do. Um, you might be able to contribute as an educator um, or some of your own personal knowledge. Uh, right now, we are doing a bit of language work, as I had mentioned earlier, and we are trying to um, have as many indigenous languages as possible translated on our um, on our website. So once you visit a particular nation, you'll be able to see the menu and some of the content for those nations in the actual language of each specific nation. We're also looking at ways of adding the pronunciations of specific nations that will accompany the land acknowledgement guide so that when you're doing your own land acknowledgement um, and if you're not sure the right way to say a certain nation's name, we will do our best to provide that for you. Um, we are constantly adding more territories, languages, and, and um, treaties to our map. So if you want to get involved with that or if you have some knowledge, we would hear from you. Um, map research, so improving map uh, mapping sources and extending to new areas of the world. Um, as I mentioned right now, we're focused on Central and South America. We are also um, looking at expanding education guides and used by teachers across Canada and the United States um, and trying to be more specific to curriculum requirements. So if that's your area of expertise, we would love to hear from you. Um, we're also really interested in discussions of how to map Indigenous territories respectfully, who qualifies as an Indigenous territory on a map, um, and how to include Indigenous communities directly. So that's allowing those Indigenous nations to really see themselves represented on the Native Land Digital site. Um, we are also looking to engage directly with Indigenous nations and resources. And also, um, if there's something that you would like to share that could be used as a blog post, uh, maybe 
a thought on what does the concept of territory actually mean or how you came to um, know about native land or how you use native land in your personal or professional life or just how your understanding of territory and the indigenous people and the place that you live has somehow shifted your life. We would love to hear from you for that too. Uh, so native land is, is looking to becoming more focused um, more indigenous focused on our methods um, and representation. So whether that means new ways of mapping, um, increased non-textual resources such as audio and, and people talking, like we're not a bit of a, um, whether it's reasonable to add a storytelling layer so people telling some um, traditional stories about, about the place that they are from. Um, as well as an increased ability for users to participate in the creation of the platform. So that would include adding additional territories or languages and so on. Um, and overall, we're just working to really improve the accuracy um, and respectfully engaging with all Indigenous communities, um, allowing for a more complete knowledge of, of each territory. So in, in closing of this, this part of the set, I'm doing all the talking. Um, if there's anything that I can leave you with, it's the promise that this work is being done with a good heart and, and in a good way um, with the intent of bringing goodness into the world and really fostering relationships with each other and with, um, with our neighbors. Um, I encourage each of you to use native land as a way to learn more about the land that you live on or the land that you come from or the land that you are new to um, and to know the incredibly deep and the long history of those places and the people who have been here since time immemorial. Um, I encourage you to hold space for Indigenous people. Um, if you have the ability to have an Indigenous person present in your organization or wherever you might work and allow them to tell their stories, um, know that we, we want to teach you, we want to share with you, we want to be able to tell our history. Um, and I want everyone to keep in mind that we are all the, the future ancestors. So we have a responsibility to those next seven generations of, of our descendants uh, to do good work in this day that allows for, um, for them to have a world that is um, more respectful, um, more full of love, more compassion, more patience, more kindness uh, for each other. And so with that, um, I want to say uh, thank you for giving me the space to share this information on Native Land Digital with all of you. Um, and I would love to answer any questions that, that you might have. So if, thanks, Christine. So if questions, if you do have questions, please use the chat area. Yeah, I see. Hi, hi everyone. This is Amy joining again. Um, Laura, oh, just just kudos to you, Christine, uh, for sharing this very interesting tool and the presentation and really appreciate this knowledge. And I'll just echo that as well. Um, thank you so much, Christine, for all that you shared with us. Um, I would really encourage <clears throat> folks who've been um, listening today to add your questions to the chat because whether you're joining us as a learner, an educator, or just a, someone that is really curious, um, your questions actually help Christine and, and her colleagues at Native Land kind of um, think through their resource and ways that they can support you in your learning journey. So maybe we'll just take a minute. Please add your questions to the chat. Um, and uh, we'll, we, we've got about 15 minutes um, for having a, a little bit of a discussion. And Amy and Emily, are we able to allow people to use their microphones if they're comfortable to ask questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to put my email um, in the chat now. Okay, so we've got um, a question from Heather, which I'll get to in one second. Heather, thank you. And then I'll just take this question from Laura in the chat. When multiple territories are noted, is there a specific order to the information? 
So when there are um, a number of territories noted, so again, going back to that example of Algonquin territory, um, it's best to do a little bit of additional resource or research to figure out whose territory it actually is. So for example, with an Algonquin unceded territory, even though it's listed as here on Wenda, it's actually only unceded Algonquin territory. So that's a good example of how you would make sure through that extra uh, research that you do list the appropriate territories. Um, as well, there's no like appropriate, say like alphabetical or, or whatever it might be. Um, but I would just be sure to be inclusive um, if there are multiple territories. So for example, um, I believe that Vancouver, um, Emily, you spoke about this earlier, like Vancouver, you have a number of intersecting territories and all of those people um, should be equally mentioned and equally acknowledged. And um, for another, I have two more examples to kind of answer that question is when you're part of an organization, say like a regional organization that wants to acknowledge um, the, the number of, of nations that exist across that region. Um, again, the order doesn't necessarily matter, just be inclusive. But what I've done in the past is say um, the Algonquin Nation to the to the north, the Ojibwe Nation uh, to the the west, and so on and so forth. So just make sure that you're you're being inclusive. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, again, reach out. I can try my best to help specifically, but certainly um, certainly we'll we'll do our best. But it's always kind of key to do that additional research. That's awesome. I think um, Heather has a, a, a question that she's going to ask and then I'll pop back into the chat for a couple other questions that have um, been shared. Over to you, Heather. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I guess my, big my, my one question is just as an educator, I, I'm just very, very conscious of terminology. Is it OK mm -hmm. to be using um, the term when you're like native land? Is that like just in terms of just using it with the combination of land? That's OK. I just want consistency with my students to make sure that I'm that we're using the right the right terms. Now, are you talking about native land as the organization or native land as in land that is indigenous? Land that is indigenous and I guess as and as the organization so and or the differences between that to explain that. So the proper name for the organization itself is actually native land um, and it can be referred to as native land digital as well so we kind of go by both. Um, when it comes to talking about territory, I would say this is the um, this is the territory of, or this is the land of, um, and you can always say this is the land of the Algonquin people. But if you know the name of the nation that you are, um, like say with Algonquin, we call ourselves a Mamawinini. So if you can and if you know, use the proper terminology rather than the colonial term that has been given to that nation. It just shows that extra bit of respect. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was what I wanted to confirm because that, that's what we that's what I've been doing, but I just wanted to make sure that that didn't become like a Anyway, I just wanted to double check. Thank you. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I, I tend to, like, terms change over time, right? So um, you can say native, but then the more appropriate term would be indigenous. And then if you can go further and talk about the specific people that are in the area, then that is preferred. So it's kind of like in these layers. Yeah, indigenous was the, the term that we've I've been asking them not to use the other term. So that's why when it came up, I wanted to double check. Okay, Perfect. thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Thanks for the question, Heather. Um, so over to Laura, or sorry, I'm skipping here. Julia, Julia had a question about, does the resource have an Instagram or Twitter handle as well as the app in the um, website? Maybe you could um, nice. pop that into the chat. So it's actually native land, if I can spell it right. So it's native land net. And so that's on Instagram and then I'm just, <laughs> It's kind of weird when it's like your own phone number. You don't always necessarily call it, so you don't necessarily yep. know. <laughs> In there. <laughs> on Twitter, it's native-land.ca, but then you can find it under native land as well. 
Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Christine. And uh, we've got another question coming in from Wafa. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, sorry for the basic question. If I heard correct, you mentioned forced territories. Could you please elaborate on that? In that case, what is the connection between a territory and a treaty? So again, um, and just to use my own nation, which I feel the most comfortable with is um, so talking about forced territories, uh, we were invaded. So here on Wendat invaded us at one point in time and actually forcibly took some of our territory. So in a sense, that kind of squished us into a forced territory, which we then moved back into. So I talk about forced territories like as well, um, even though the city of Ottawa is um, unceded Algonquin territory, we are still within the nation's capital. So our territory, the boundaries, um, not the overall boundaries, like the shape of the boundaries, but our territories become forced into something that we did not necessarily agree to. Um, and then the connection between a territory and a treaty. So I would say um, it varies from nation to nation. And you would have to kind of look at it on a specific case-by-case um, -case basis. So, for example, with Algonquin Territory, it is the, the place on the land that we have always or that we occupy. Um, Algonquin Territory is, um, is delineated by the Ottawa River and its tributaries. And so on the land itself, we knew like this height of land or by the time we get to that river system, that's a delineation of our territory. And we may or may not have had agreements with our closest neighbors to whether or not we can, um, can go on those territories or harvest from those territories and so on. Um, as far as a treaty, a treaty is something that would have been uh, negotiated with the Crown. Uh, there are older agreements through something called wampum belts and again those are, are basically the treaties or the agreements as to how land would be uh, used and occupied. So there, there is, um, I see that Amy put something in the chat um, about terminology and I would also encourage you to, um, I'm going to write the name of uh, Chelsea Vowell um, who I'd mentioned before, she wrote a book called Indigenous Rights. And it's, it's an absolutely excellent, excellent resource that will explain that all in, in great depth. Thanks so much, Christine. Um, we've got another question here uh, coming in from Danny. So Danny has been poking around native land for a while and your tutorial was quite helpful. Um, are there local contacts for many indigenous territorial areas? Um, absolutely. We do try to list a few on the native land site, but again, this points to um, your own role as a researcher. So Google, like if you know whose territory, use native land as a way to identify whose territory that you're on and then kind of verify if, um, if land is actually that territory or if it's shared by somebody else or if there's anybody um, who, who's also there. Um, but from there, you can see um, who has a treaty in this area or what's the closest reserve or um, who maybe has a friendship center there. So it's always that deeper, deeper research to what's in that area. But certainly um, there are contacts and there are organizations and there are indigenous governments in, in every territory, even if you might not, uh, might not know about them yet. Thanks, Christine. Um, Hemily is just reminding me of a question that came up from our conversations that we had in the past. Um, so it, it, was it was something that comes up when she's meeting with faculty. We do consultations with faculty all the time in our roles at CTLT. And it, it's just this idea of understanding some of the terminology used for territory, confederacy, unceded, ancestral. And I think that you'd mentioned there was a glossary or something that you were working on. Can you speak to that a little bit? Or it might be premature in, in the discussion. Uh. Be a little bit premature because I have to jog my memory on that one. <laughs> um, can you can you kind of ask that again for me? Sure. Were you working on a 
glossary for terms such as territory, confederacy, unceded, ancestral. Is that was that something that Native Land Digital was going to be? Is that a future-facing project, or is that something that exists already? Um, it is something now. Whether it, it might, sorry guys, I can't. I can't directly say that. Yes, it does. I know that there are things that do exist within the um, the Tory Acknowledgement Guide, so that's a good place to start. And I know that we have plans to dig a little bit deeper into the definition of like what is territory, um, what um, like what is territory, what does it mean, and, and so on. But we do have a few resources that are are available on the website for sure. Thanks so much. Maybe we'll just leave it another minute or so for any other questions coming in from um, our online audience. Post, feel free to post those in the chat. And in the meantime, while well, well, any of you want to ask other questions, um, before the session, Emily and I had talked about how do you acknowledge territories when you're working in a digital space? And even though I don't have an absolute black and white, here's the answer. But what I would suggest is for the people who are who are hosting or for the people who are um, presenting, that they acknowledge the territory that they are working within and, and encourage others who are participating in the session to think about or learn about whose territory they are on as well. Christine, can I, um, can I uh, add something to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, again, I'm only I'm only kind of bringing this up because again I have this conversation a lot with faculty because now that everyone's shifted completely online and I know we have a variety of people in the session today, not all within academia, but um, so this is kind of what I do in my in one of my particular online courses I'm doing. But uh, again, I, I liked how you suggested that you can also encourage students to engage in the same conversations because now that everybody's online from around the world. Um, Everyone's coming in from very different territories. So having that conversation perhaps in a discussion area, um, I think would be su su such an incredible, incredible exploration for people to do. So, Thanks, Emily. Um, Emily, I wonder if you can take us to the resources slide of the presentation that Christina's prepared for us, just so Absolutely. people viewing it can have a couple minutes to absorb some of the good sharing. Um, and information gathering that Christine has done for the session. Yeah. And while you're doing that, <clears throat> perfect. So there's some recommended reading there um, that Christine has shared. Um, and you'll see that I could put up the Indigenous rights too. <laughs> it's a good, it's a really good resource. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, before we're closing off, I might just add, we have a few more events that are coming up um, for those folks who might be interested. I've just posted a link to all of the Indigenous Initiatives um, events that are coming up. We have another one coming up on Thursday on centering Indigenous voices in online spaces. And then there's one, I believe it's the following week, on um, centering Indigenous voices in your course syllabus. Um, so I just, oh, so there's one more question coming in right, right before we finish and then I'll um, close us off. So Sarika asks, now when I share remote meetings with members across Canada, I ask everyone to make their local land acknowledgement and tell us a little bit about what they know about the land they're on. Okay, so more of a, more of a, a shared practice. Thanks for sharing that, Sarika. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Christine, I'll ask, do you have any other final thoughts for us as we're closing off the session today? So I just want to encourage everyone, if you um, if you have any questions that are specific or even have suggestions on things that we could possibly add to the Native Land site, please feel free to reach out. We would absolutely love to, to hear from you. Um, you can reach out by email or on any of social media platforms too. And um, also on the contact form on the website. Somehow I will see your message, but uh, I do want to say to Miigwech and thank you to everyone for, for joining us today. Thank you so much again, Christine. It's always a pleasure to, to learn from you and, and to just have this um, strengthened ongoing friendship that we've, we've formed here. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks Emily and Carissa. Um, for also your contributions and your support for the session. I hope everyone has a good week. The sun is shining. Um, we've got people graduating today, so it's a good day, and uh, thanks for joining us.